Let's say you are facing an issue in your production environment. Perhaps a third-party script is slowing down your site. Maybe there's a typo in the API or even an unexpected course error. While you might have a solution in mind, it's crucial to test it locally before deploying any changes to production. This is where the DevTools Locker Overrides features come to rescue. You can temporarily change resources and even test different scenarios locally without impacting your live website. Look at this coffee website. All the coffee's content shows up correctly, except this one. The espresso color is missing. Looking at the text here, it seems like there is a typo in the data. That could be the source of error. Let's validate our assumption. Since the data is coming from an API, we go to the network panel and filter by fetch. Click on the list.json and look through the response. Aha, this is where we need to fix it. Next, you can right-click and select Overwrite Content. DevTools will save a copy of the response and open it in the Sources panel. Edit the file, save it, and refresh the page. Cool, the Espresso is back. We can now apply the fix to the production environment. By the way, if this is your first time overriding, you need to set up a locker folder to store the changes and grant DevTools permissions to access the folder. These locker overrides features also can help you prototype new UI designs quicker. Sometimes, the backend API isn't ready when you are working on front-end changes. For example, this is a new coffee page with a new API. If you already know the data structure, you can mock it up to unlock your design without delays. You can override the 404 request and add your mock data. Refresh the page and there you go. Now you can test your design instantly. Also, all the overridden files are stored on your drive. You can right-click to open the folder and edit them using your favorite code editor. Even better, you can sync this folder to a shared location if you want to share them with your colleague. Next, let's talk about fixing a performance issue. A web page with layout shift is bad for user experience. It is annoying when you are halfway through reading the page and something suddenly changes. Cumulative Layout Shift, or CLS, is a stable core web vital metric to help you measure and ensure that the page is delightful. Look at this page. There is an advertisement that pops up on the top and pushes the content down. This is not great. Looking at the CLS in our performance trace, we can confirm that the score is low. You recently learned that setting a fixed height to the element could fix the jumping issues. Let's put what we have learned into action. Looking at our DOM tree, we found the banner container. Let's change the height to 300 pixels and reload the page. Oops, it is good to note that whatever you change in the elements panel is gone after page reloads. We need to identify the actual source file to apply the changes. Now, this is the tricky part. How do you find the correct file? Let's pull out the search panel to help us. Once you press Escape to pull up the drawer, select the three-dot menu here and open the search panel. Let's search using the banner container keyword. Cool, we get multiple results here. Not our luckiest day, but we are getting close. Looking through the result, this line contains the word CSS. So let's start with that. Open the file, right-click and select Overrides Content. Great, a copy of the file is created in the Overrides folder. Let's add in our height CSS, save it and reload the page. Excellent, the layout shift is gone. Let's record a performance trace again to confirm that. Perfect, no more CLS detected. In case you accidentally overwrite the other file, DevTools might warn you. For example, this line looks promising. When you select Overwrite, DevTools warns you that this is the source map file, not the correct one. Press OK and it will redirect you to the one that you should edit. So far, I have shown you how to overwrite an API response and a JavaScript file. In fact, 
you can mock a lot of other files like HTML, CSS, and even images. Here is another great news. You can override the response header as well. This is helpful for testing course issues or any other security headers changes. For example, this page throws an error on cross-origin resource sharing header. The data is not loading. It requires server changes. While waiting for the backend to fix that, you can override the headers to test and unblock your development. When you hover over a request, you can see a little pencil icon. Click on that and start mocking. You can edit any existing value or add a new header. DevTools saves your changes automatically to a .headers file. Unfortunately, the other data is still blocked. Of course, we can follow the same steps just now to mock this request. But I want to show you something even better. Thankfully, the header configuration supports wildcard characters. Open the .headers file in our previous request. From here, you can change the rules to apply to all URLs instead of just one. Reload the page again, and yay, you can see now both data are available. By the way, it's good to note that cache doesn't work with local overrides. DevTools will automatically disable cache if you enable local overrides. You can hover over the warning icons to see what is changing the network behavior. Cool. Let's end this video with a bonus tip. You can filter overridden requests with the has overrides prefix. You can add the has overrides column to your network logs. You can filter the request with that as well. It comes with four options. Did you notice DevTools decorates overridden requests with an icon with a purple dot? If you open the request, we will show a purple dot as well next to the headers and response tab to indicate which part of the request is overridden. That's a very thoughtful design. All right, these are the insightful blog posts from the web community showcasing their experiments with local overrides. Definitely check them out for more inspiration. Feel free to share your own local override stories and desired features in the comments below. That's all. Have fun mocking and good luck debugging. See you soon. Ciao!